Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, I hope today we will have a good topic to discuss, and I believe it's very important topic can impact the life of many people. You know, many years ago, I maybe maybe ten years ago, time go fast. I was having a debate in a chat program. It's called Pal Talk, and uh, the debate is about uh, women in Islam. And uh, you know, second day I receive a long message. You know, I used to have my Pal Talk open so anyone can text me. The same as Skype. Uh, so I received a long message from a woman. She was going to marry a Muslim. And um, she was nervous about such a decision. And in her message, she's saying that uh, she entered Pal Talk in her wedding day. She was so nervous. And she's waiting for the car to pick her up, the limousine. Which means she will get married like in, in an hour or two. And uh, she's ready to go, and uh, she she decided to go to Pal Talk. And then she's noticed there is a chat room talking about women, uh, women in Islam, you know, something like that, women right in Islam, etc. And she enter, and she heard the Muslim saying that a Muslim man he have the right to beat his wife. And you know, we have like uh, this mo this Muslim, he was a little bit honest, so he was saying things kind of uh, how it like I mean the way it is, not. Uh, uh, not a fabricator so this woman she sent me a message saying yesterday uh, there is something very important happened to me I and she told me the story I never spoke to her actually I never never spoke to her even after that um, she sent that message and disappeared and she said she was going to get married from a Muslim and then she heard the debate and she told uh, after she heard that um, she called the, her future husband and she told him she want to change the date because she is not sure. And she said the second she said that to him, she he started threatening her, saying to her, "Do you know how much how much this has cost me? Do you know how much I spent money? I'm going to find you. I'm going to make your life miserable. I'm going, you know, to the point he go to like threaten to to threaten her life." And she said to me, "Thank you because look, you know." I just told him I'm not sure and he start he talking like as if he want to kill me. So what if something happened in the future? So she was saying thank you watching your debate yesterday changed my life. Now many naive people you know they are driven by emotion. Emotion that God he created us with emotion and emotion can be good. But emotion it can be stupid. If it is not uh, wise I mean you have to match you have to walk together emotion and wisdom when I do anything in life like now let us say I want to go and I like to visit the old ancient Assyrian uh, um, buildings in Iraq but it's occupied by Isis I mean this is stupid right let's say I have emotion let's say I am an Assyrian and I want to go there to visit my her in heritage, but that will be stupid. I have emotion, but my emotion will lead me into. I mean, they, they will kill me there. This is ISIS territory. They occupy it. Now, now for sure they are gone. But I'm saying that you should not be a fool by emotion. You have always to think wisely, and not only would Mr. Muslim man any any anyone. I mean, uh, it's good to be in love. No, nobody's saying love is good. You know, life without love is useless. But love, not to the point you are a fool. So now what is the problem with marrying someone? He is a Muslim. First of all, we as a Christians, and I don't know you guys, the one listening, how many of you is a Christian or not. Uh, but as a Christians, we cannot marry non-believer. And there is many verses in the Bible speaking about that in the Old Testament and the New Testament. So when you when you say I want to marry non-believer, when I say non-believer, I mean non-Christian. You are uh, you are doing something against the command, and the teaching and the wisdom of the Bible.
now for you this is sin this is not sin you know I mean uh, if you don't care for the, the Bible anyway I mean why you think this is a problem then you can sleep around there's many people they uh, they take off their panty for two in two seconds yet they claim to be Christians the same as the Muslims but that will not make a difference for you if I show you a verse say this this is wrong right if I show you that you should not sleep around before getting married then you will say I mean uh, uh, yeah, I agree with it, but I do it. Okay, so this is the, when we say the Bible says is 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 for those who consider the Bible the book of God, and they are really Christians, not a Christian by name, who don't care really what the Bible says. And the Bible says it clearly that you cannot mix between righteousness and, and non righteousness. Those who have God and those who have idols, those who have the true belief in the Messiah, and those who don't believe in the Messiah. The verses is so clear in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, but as I said, if you don't believe in the Bible, I mean, who care for you? I mean, you don't you don't care. There's many people they claim to be Christians, but she have a boyfriend and he have a girlfriend, and, and they we you know they sleep together. Now all of us we commit sin. I'm not saying you know this is not uh, uh, sin is sin, but not a lifestyle. When you make it a lifestyle, then you know that's mean Christianity is not really your lifestyle too. If your lifestyle is sleeping around, don't don't claim to be Christian. You are just uh, you know following a you know you are born of a parents. They call themselves Christians, and maybe you go to the church uh, just to um, it's, it's like a social club. So either you follow the Bible or you don't follow the Bible. If you don't follow the Bible, then you are not a Christian at all. You are just pretending, fooling yourself, saying I am a Christian. And I'm not talking about somebody committing sin and then he regret the sin because the nature of a human being is, you know, he do wrong. But a Christian person, when he commits sin, he say to himself, this is wrong. I will fight it. I will not do it. But you make it as a lifestyle. That's mean you don't really believe in the Bible and you don't care. So the Bible is so clear that we cannot really have mixed marriage. We cannot have relationship between a man and a woman it doesn't matter who is the man and who is the woman the, the, the man is the Christian or the woman is the Christian it doesn't matter uh, as long it's only one side Christian and the other one is not that is not uh, the case uh, to 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 practice because the Bible says this is wrong now why the Bible is wrong I mean say, saying this is wrong uh, we will go into details and I will try to explain even for those who don't believe in the Bible anyway because there's many maybe they are atheists and they don't believe in the Bible, so the Bible is not a problem for them to, to stop them from doing such a thing. You see, I made many videos before and I said, don't marry from somebody from different culture. As an example, I am an Arab. I am an Arab. And to make it simple, I have different culture. You like it, you don't. Well, I, I, I am born from the Middle East. Uh, my family, my parents are Middle Eastern. So I have different culture. What I can do with it. So. You marry someone like me. I am a Christian, not even a Muslim. You marry someone like me, and then you expect to have, uh, you know, a perfect marriage. Uh, that will happen only if one of us compromise his culture. One of us have to compromise. And how much compromise you do, I don't know. Uh, somebody is born in America. He grew up in America, and he did not really practice uh, his background culture, like his parents' culture. Even that one can be still under the influence of his parents' culture. So what about a person he have totally different culture from yours? Someone he believe that a man should not be questioned why he did beat his wife. You cannot question the man. So we are talking about not only a culture thing. We are talking about things beyond, you know, beyond beyond the, uh, 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 your expectation. So, uh, you know, I, I wish I can play this video for you. This is made by Channel 4 in England. They recorded uh, people secretly, you know, in their, uh, you know, like, uh, like investigation. And, you know, the Muslim sheikhs all over says the man should, she, he have the right to beat his wife. This is the Quran, chapter 4, verse number 34. The Quran says beat them. So what the problem? If the Quran says beat them, then you can beat them. So when you when you marry from somebody, he believed that a man he can beat you. Then obviously we have a totally different mentality. Now in the beginning, you know when you are uh, 
in the honeymoon he will say to you whatever you wish to, to hear like what do you want to hear actually all men all men in order to get to the panty of the women they say whatever they want the women she like to say to hear right not only Muslim men he said to you I love you he said to you I'm crazy about you he say well, he say whatever he say just to get what he want but then later the stories will be different this is what the Muslims believe about women and this is their holy scriptures holy scriptures in case you do not know mean that's that is no question about it there's no compromise this is holy for them so the man is in charge and by the way in Christianity the man in charge too of the house that's will not be the different but the different is what a charge mean the man in Christianity in charge that he is the one who sacrificed himself the same as the Messiah he sacrificed himself to the church so the, the, the Christ he said uh, uh, like the man he sacrificed himself he gave himself the same as the Messiah he gave himself to the church so the Messiah he made the women equal to the church and the man is the same as the Messiah who gave himself so in charge here is not to humiliate you but to sacrifice himself which mean his number one priority in life is to make his family happy and his family means his wife is a children's not to think about himself and he is number one so in charge in Islam is different in charge in Islam women are created as a sexual toys and the purpose of women is not really to have a family the purpose of them is to enjoy them in bed and women she have to obedience which is even the Bible says the women she have to be obedience but the women she have to be obedience you know in the way she choose to be which mean when you go in a marriage you say you agree uh, in, a, in an agreement that he is the he is the man I am the woman and we agree to live in such a life this is the obedience It's not about the man he can beat you the obedience here is about he sacrifice himself and I will sacrifice myself too he do his best I do my best he is not better than me and I'm not better than him he is in charge because the man in, in in society he can do things women they cannot do in the same time women they can do things in society the man he cannot do so everybody he have his job but in islam the women is always has no job except the bed and making babies and doing laundry and cooking for the man if you see here with me the quran says as for those that the good woman is the one who is obedience you know and why the man is in charge of the women because Allah he made them he made one of them excel on the other so the man he excelled how he excel because they spend of their property the money on the women so here you notice right away that Islam look down at you uh, as if you are a prostitute the logic is why I am excel because I spend money on you and that is not only disrespect that is far away from what marriage is about marriage is not about I spend money on you because the women she is doing her work too you see if you go outside and you make money and she is staying home and but she don't make money doesn't mean you are better she can work outside too and she can make money but her job and in, inside that in, in, indoor is something the man he cannot do it's equal and maybe more important but Islam always think about the women that this is what you are made for you are just a maid at home you are the one who wash dishes you feed the kids you feed the husband and before he sleep you do some some uh, uh, happy ending massage for him do you understand guys what I'm saying the mentality the mentality is different so if I spend money on you that's mean you became my prostitute this is prostitute mentality women she is like a prostitute you spend money on her so you expect what return and what is the return the return you'll be obedience and not only that you see if you are a maid if you are a maid of somebody okay well but still the boss he cannot beat you he can fire you no in Islam he can beat you 
our obedience God in their secret as Allah he told them and then as for those whom you fear rebellion admonish them and banish them uh, uh, to bed the parts and discourage them here the translation by the way is very much big fat lie in different translation they say to you first and second and there are things which is uh, and, and some of them they even they say to you beat them lightly which is absolutely stupid and doesn't make sense and we know that it's not beaten lightly you know we know the hadith where Aisha she said a woman she came to Muhammad and her husband did beat her uh, uh, like even her clothes became a greener than uh, her, uh, her, her 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 skin became uh, greener than her clothes and Muhammad he took the side of the man against the, the woman as you see here in the hadith Aisha herself she affirmed that she never saw any women she is suffering as much as a believing woman read careful with me the women she came to Muhammad to complain because Muhammad is the ruler and she said to Aisha she saw Aisha and then she was wearing a green veil and Aisha she said uh, uh, she saw her a spot in her skin from beating caused by beating and it was the habit of the ladies look how the Muslim entity the habit of the ladies to support each other which means this is not right but this is the habit of the ladies you know ladies are uh, women you know La ladies support each other support each other so when Allah Apostle came Aisha said I have not seen any women suffering as much as a believing woman this is summarized for us the life of women in the time of Muhammad they have no just life she never saw any women between the Arab suffering as much as who as a Muslim woman which mean Muslim women is the most of us who suffer I mean all of you speak English better than me and I think the meaning is so clear correct so a believing woman she suffer a lot suffer a lot from what beating and if you read the whole story Muhammad he did not even ask the man why you did beat his wife not only that Muhammad he took his side and he the, the man he did beat his wife because the women she don't want to sleep with him so Muhammad he told her you cannot do that which means he took the side of the man he's, he's right he had to beat you and he oh, he told her you have to sleep with him so Islam promote rape because if a woman she is your wife doesn't mean you can force her into sex but Islam not only force you into sex he the man he can use violence with you beat you and rape you and this is why you see in YouTube someone like this idiot saying teaching the truth about his religion saying a man should not be question questions why he hit his wife in another video this is this uh, Muslim cleric you know he's saying Allah honored wives by instituting and in, in stating the punishment of beating you see that you are honored you are honored this is not something bad so if I want to honor you I will beat you any women like that who uh, who here is a lady like to be honored you know we have a lot of honoring uh, uh, followers of Sharia law they would love to honor you all right so uh, Muslim women are lucky to be beaten this is what this guy is saying and this guy he's saying what's wrong with that I mean what's you know and not only that in the video actually that they were saying women they like a harsh man and they say according to study Muslim they fabricate studies according to studies in England most of women they are complaining that their husbands are very weak because they don't beat them I mean if you watch the video you would die laughing this is a study that men, women they are complaining the men are not strong what happened to them they became weak they are not beating us I mean the women they are desperate like why you don't beat us anymore like hello you don't want to be a man the fact a man who beat a woman he is not a man you see one of the sign of being a coward is beating someone is less strength than you doesn't matter who is he even if it's a man like if you are uh, seven foot tall and then you go to someone he is 140 uh, uh, centimeter high and then you want to show that how you are strong that's mean you are a coward even if he's a man so what about beating men women and children a man of honor he will not do that 
so look how they try to justify by fabricating such an an, an, an an argument and a logic like how you can you know the prophet says don't beat in her face here we go see the prophet said don't beat her in the face so where you beat her beat her in her chest the same as Muhammad he did beat Aisha in her chest uh, beat her in her ass I mean do you see how Islam honor you the Prophet said don't beat her in the in the face <laughs> so imagine you want to marry someone believe in this and then you are expecting and then you know you see some people they are making articles about uh, you know, I married a Muslim. Yeah, we just see in a few years what you will say. You know, there is a woman in, in Paltok. She used to work uh, in a uh, radio station in England, Islamic radio station. She married a Muslim. And she have from him kids. And they made her convert to Islam and they use her for many years to speak in the radio station So she would have fooled many women to convert to Islam and God knows how many women did she were fooled by her and then uh, Her husband went to Jordan. He's a Jordanian and Then he started going to Jordan like every two or three months You know the husband don't work the women she the wife she work. She's the one who had the money Where are you going to Jordan? Where are you coming from from Jordan? So it felt like there's something fishy with this Jordan thing later. She discovered that he married 14 15 years old young child in Jordan And you know when she find out she went crazy and she decided to divorce him and then she decided to leave Islam and blah, 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 drama But it is not the fault of the Muslim man. It's your fault. It's you being stupid they use you they made you convert to Islam. They made you promote Islam They made you to fool many women to into Islam and now today you are saying to me You just found out what Islam is about. Well, you know from the beginning you talk in the radio station Islamic radio station Teaching about Islam, but you do not know that the Muslim man he can have up to four wives He can have up to four of you in the same time. He's not cheating according to Muslims A Muslim, he do not need to cheat in order to sleep with someone else. Islam is religion, teach cheating legally. If you do not do it in uh, in England because Islam, uh, like, is not the law of England, he can do it still secretly without announcing the marriage. Actually, there's many Muslim men in the in Europe. They have three, four wives. And then they register them as a single mother because then she can get the child support There's no father support the the government will pay which means the Muslim will have 60 kids and you from your tax You will pay for his kids There's actually a report on YouTube about a guy. He have many wives in Australia He lived in Australia all his life for more than 20 years. He never worked for a day Not even a day the women the Muslim women they get a child support for his children from the government everything is for free their food their apartment their rent because they are not registered as wife legally but for them in Islam it's okay because for them at the end of the day the law of their government is not their law it is a Sharia law so Sharia law saying that they are his wives they married in the mosque so legally he can sleep with them according to Islam and you know the government they have to pay for the children because the woman she said I do not know who is the father I do not know who who was the father so uh, when you want you know when you talk about uh, I want to I want to marry first of all shouldn't you ask yourself what the word marriage mean like you see guys here even in translation look what the Muslim they say to us it says here if you cannot be fair with the orphan and then they translate saying Mary the an Arabic doesn't say Mary. There's nowhere in the verse it says Mary. It says thank you. The word inkahu mean F them. F them. And look, 
what the verse saying I want people to analyze carefully with me if women who they are seem good to you okay by spending from your property and uh, but what kind of uh, what exactly is that like marry a woman she you love her no 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 this there's there's no marriage here it's just if in them if a woman she you you think she is good for you which means she is beautiful she is whatever and then look what the Quran says uh, what kind of women how many women we can have it says starting from two so if two or three or four if you cannot if two or three or four then can you then you can if one and here justice by the way is not about being just it's about being you cannot afford it so why in islam i will answer you kenneth uh why in islam it says go and if two and three and four like is it is it the is it the standard to start with two yes islam prefer you to have two and three and four but only it is not likable to have one only the one who cannot afford it then okay go for one but a good muslim who is following allah he should start with two and three and four because muhammad he said he want to increase the number of muslims so marriage here is not exist this is this is a sex contract now i, I, I will go back to the verse i want to see the question what if uh, uh, if uh, one Christian uh, married to a Muslim woman, then later they have a child, a child is a Christian. Later the Muslim women convert to Christianity. My friend, you are you are describing for me a beautiful story. Most likely is not going to happen. So you are guessing maybe this is will happen. What if this is not happen? What if she? What is the opposite? What if the woman she was able to make you and your children Muslims? Secondly, who said to you you can marry a, a Muslim woman? If you if you marry a Muslim woman, her family they will do honor killing. Maybe you do not know that, right? Because it's forbidden in Islam to marry a Muslim woman. And here you need to ask yourself why in Islam a man he can marry Christian women, but a Muslim woman she cannot marry a Christian man because the the law is that the children they belong to their father. So Islam allow. Just for the sake of increasing the number of Muslim, allow the Muslim man to have a, a, a non-Muslim woman in his bed, but not because he will love her, but because to increase. Otherwise, why a Muslim woman she cannot marry uh, a, a, a Christian man or a Hindu man? She cannot. You see, if you go, if you search, if you search in Google, Tunisia just just uh, left the ban of marrying uh, non-muslims but this is the only country in the middle east did that because they are trying to uh, they are under the influence of many european uh, many tunisian they lived in uh, did live in europe so now they decide that this is not right i mean uh, you know so but this is against islam there's many islamic countries they made a threat against tunis actually they threat them they will cut them they be caught them they will not buy product from them just because they decide to allow uh, a Tunisian women to marry non-Muslim why a Muslim woman is not allowed to marry non-Muslim this is Islam online you can search on the internet so uh, the point of marriage here obviously there's a there's a there is something fishy I can marry from you as a man but you cannot marry I can marry your sister but you can't marry my sister huh, why Oh, because you are a filthy pig, and then if you marry my sister, you will make her kids uh, Christians. I'm a Muslim, I will marry your sister, and I will make the, her kids good, which is the Muslims, right? So this is the logic. They are not marrying really. It's just, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a agenda. It's an agenda to promote uh, the number of, of uh, the Muslims. So you will be naive if you uh, think, Okay, well, I'm going to marry a Muslim woman and then the kids will be it might be the opposite Actually most of the time is going to be the opposite because Muslims are very well trained to attack Christianity and Everything in Islam is based in attacking Christianity. So this woman or the man you marry he is already Full of it all his life. He is hearing 
articles the Quran the Christians are bad the Christians are actually and here by the way you will see the hypocrisy of the cult of Islam how in Islam it says you cannot take a Christians and Jews as a friends and then in Islam it says you know okay you can marry from them for the sake of promoting the numbers they are willing to do so right if if a Muslim cannot take you as a friend that means your husband cannot take you as a friend let us say you are a Christian woman and you want to marry a Muslim and you know obviously you are not really too much of a Christian woman because you don't care for the Bible for the Bible says it clearly you know you can go to Corinthian you will see clearly it says you cannot do that oh you believe take not the Jews and the Christians for friends they are friends uh, one to another and he among you who take them as a friend he is one of them he is a wrongdoer he's an evil okay so now the man he want to marry you but he cannot take you as a friend G guys are you listening did you notice something wrong here did you notice something wrong he he is willing to marry you but quran forbid him from taking you as a friend so what are you you are a you know just a, you're a sex partner islam does not promote marriage you see this is why the quran did not use the word marriage let me let me find you because some some muslim they will say oh no the word inkahu uh, it means marriage absolutely false let me show you the reference <clears throat> and always you know uh, in case you do not know you know we don't uh, we don't make things without showing reference and proofs right <coughs> otherwise uh, talk is cheap right anyone can talk and talk is cheap we don't do Islamic method of uh, argument where talk is cheap and they say whatever and they they debate themselves and they win the argument because nobody is answering them getting them busted uh, so let us see what the word nikah mean. All right. Where we can find the word nikah? Here you will see what the word nikah mean. Guys, is it clear? Is the screen clear for you? Can you read the text? Let me try to zoom in more. Nikah literally means sexual intercourse. This is who saying that? This is not a Christian prince. This is their Islamic website. This is alislam.org, official Islamic website. Did we prove it? So what the term the Quran use, which Muslim they claim it's a marriage? F them. Have you ever heard of a God saying go and F2 and the three and four? And if, if you cannot afford it, F1? He could not even use the word marriage. He used the word F them. So you talk about marriage they talk about if in you <laughs> excuse my language are you getting are you getting the point so not only we have different culture we have different definition for the relation you are going through a muslim he can divorce you easy because he is not marrying you he is hiring you for sex he can go right now and let us search in google give me a second a Muslim man, he can divorce you by a text message, as simple, as easy as that. Why it's so easy? Because you are not a wife, you are just a, you are just a woman in the bed. All right? Look at the, the divorce by text message. This is serious. This, you know, so if you want to be a fool and you think you are marrying a Muslim, you are not marrying a Muslim. 
You want me to get a text message? This is how you important for for the man to the point. Okay, I'm driving my car. Okay, you are divorced. All right, nice to meet you. Now take off your panties and get out of my home. And by the way, in Islam, you don't get 50% of the inheritance or his money. You get nothing. You get only what is written in the contract. I remember when I was in school, uh, a guy, his name is Muhammad. He's a Bedouin. He, you know, he was upset. Well, we were like very young, like a teenage. So I said to him, what's wrong? He said, uh, the, the, the idiot, my father, he divorced my mother. So, well, I'm sorry. Well, well, what happened? He said, "Well, what happened? He have uh, he kept marrying younger. You know, the, each one of them she get uh, older, and then he replaced her as 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 much as soon he get, he saved some money, he get a new wife. Hey, That's what they do. And look what happened. When he married this woman long time ago, they wrote in the contract. Let us say I, I will transform the, the the money into the dollar. You know, okay, I will give you uh, fifty thousand dollar." But this is when he married her 20 years ago, right? And 20 years ago, the 50 million dollars, like five million dollars. When he divorced her, the money she got from him is what is written in the contract. He said it's not enough to buy a TV, which means it's not even equal to a $100, imagine. So she spent most of her life washing his underwears, taking care of his family and now she have to leave with less than a hundred dollar in her pocket because this is your wages you are not a partner this you are not a partner So if you think you are getting into marriage, I, uh, you know, I say to you, sorry, you are being a foolish person. This is not a marriage. Can a divorce occur by text message? You know, and how many Islamic countries they approve that already? And actually, Sharia court approve it because at the end of the day, yeah, the man he have the right to divorce you by just stating a, a statement saying I divorce you. That's it. Be serious, guys, in the text, please. We, well, what we are talking about is serious, but maybe some of you are taking it as a joke. There's many people, their life can be changed and can be switched upside down by a, such a mistake they do in their life. In the beginning, the man who would be nice, any man, any man, I mean, any woman, any man, in the beginning, the relationship, uh, he love her, he's so crazy about her, she is so crazy about him. So first day, you know, okay, you have a date, he opened the door for you, uh, you know, uh, he opened the car door, uh, he hold her from your hand to step in the step as if you are like a butterfly. And uh, yeah, uh, two years after, he don't open the door for you, he asks you to open the door for him. And if you fail down in your face, he, say, he will say to you, what's wrong with you? Are you blind? A year before, if you fail down, he will say, honey, what happened? Are you okay? So don't be fooled, don't be stupid. There is no marriage here. It is just a contract for a sexual relationship. So if you don't believe in marriage and you want to sleep with the Muslim, then that's your business. But this is not a marriage. Don't fool yourself. And then what you will do to the children. There is many. Go and see. You can go and search right now in Google. Prophet Google, peace upon him. You will find many women, they never see their children again. Why? The parent, the father, he takes his children for vacation to Saudi Arabia. Search right now. How many women, the Amer American women, forget about what a different country. I, I live in America. Thousands. Cases of women, they cannot see their children ever again. Why? Because they take them home, supposedly for vacation, and then from there he sent a text message, well, they will stay here. What you can do about it. If you don't believe me, go and search on Google.
Yeah, you know, Muslim and Muhammad himself, he did that. You know, if you don't remember the story of uh, of uh, Sauda, Sauda went to Zama. She became old, and according to the hadith, with my respect to everybody, I don't want to use like word which is not nice, but obviously she became old and ugly and uh, fat and whatever. You know, all the the terms you use in the in a in a street. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to make it just as it is. So. Uh, Actually, there's a verse about it in the Quran. You see, in the Quran, it says, if a woman, if you fear that they are uh, doing the shoes, you beat them. You beat them. But if the man doing the shoes, look what the Quran says. The same act. It, the word the shoes appear in the Quran in two verses in chapter 4 chapter 4 verse 34 and chapter 4 verse number 128 if you have my book you will find it a deception of Allah so if a woman she do the shoes her husband he can stop sleeping with her and this is exactly what he did with Sauda and I shall convince him that don't divorce her let her give me her day because Muhammad he have to give a day for every wife he have 13 wives and hundreds of six slaves so Muhammad, it's okay for the Muslim man if he stop having sex with you. Actually, you are lucky if he stop having sex with you, he don't divorce you. Because this poor woman, Sauda, she will be homeless. There is no retirement. I mean, how she will support herself? She served him all her life and now he will dump her because she became old. So Sauda, she, uh, she spoke to Aisha. She heard that the Prophet, he is going to divorce her because he stopped coming to her house. So Aisha, because she's smart, she said to Muhammad, don't divorce her. I mean, what you will lose? Make an agreement with her that she agree to give you the day which she used to give to her to me. So I will have two days. Two days mean more money because all the gifts, they come to Aisha. If you remember the story where all the wives of Muhammad, they were fighting over the gifts. The gifts, they come to the house of the Prophet, wherever he is. So if the Prophet visiting Aisha, the gift will go to the house of Aisha. If Muhammad visiting Hafsa, but I, but then Aisha she threat all the people that you know what if you want the, the gift is a bribe is not really a gift if you want what you're asking for to have to come true then you better to send it to my house because I am the one who have influence on him who can make him agree to do what you ask for because the gift is a bribe it's like you have a minister in a government and you want him to do something for you so you send him a gift Otherwise, why people want to send gifts to the prophet? I mean, you're a prophet of God. What does that mean? What's your what? What is the what's gift about? Is about what? And why they are coming to the house of Aisha? So here you will see in chapter four, verse number twenty-eight. It's a story about Muhammad. He don't want to sleep with a woman. She is old. Her name is Sauda bin Tudama, and then they made her agree to give her. You see, eh, there is no problem for the man. If he have no shoes, uh, he don't uh, like her has her, his wife to make an agreement, right? If a woman fears ill treatment from her husband, okay, why the husband he have ill treatment? It's okay, you see, in Islam, the man he can have ill treatment to you. It's okay, it's his right. <laughs> you see, in the verse before it. If the women she have ill treatment the same word look look how look how they they change the same the, the same word translation changed here they translate the word new shoes as ill treatment here they tr translate the word new shoes as rebellion so when a Muslim woman she do new shoes she is rebellion if a man do new shoes he is ill treatment to the women I don't like her it's okay he's right you know, he have the right to, you know, not to treat you God. He don't, he don't like you. You see the double standard? So if you think you can you can live with a man, believe in this, oh, good for you. Hey, you are not a wife. You are just a sexual contract who get paid. And one day he will get rid of you. He have the right even to have four in the same time with you. He can go legally, officially, he can go to McDonald's 
and sit with four women in his table and he hold their hands and he said to them today get ready I'm coming to your bed in the front of your face legally because this is his religion so you know people they can be foolish and we can be stupid and what we can do for them in the beginning you are in relationship you are driven by 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 emotion you know uh, the guy is nice I like him he's and by the way uh, uh, Western women they like they like Middle Eastern men uh, because Middle Eastern men they have uh, they are different from Western men and let me explain to you you know I am a Middle Eastern right so a Middle Eastern man he don't like a woman to pay like if you go to a place the women no she should not pay it's like a shame but this is not because he's good yeah. Let me explain to you here how, how uh, women they Some women they think because the man he insists he will pay that's mean. He's a good guy That's not because he's a good guy That because he is not self-confident Because in his culture made him believe that if you pay that mean he is a woman He is not a man enough to pay for the women This is the culture so he don't believe that you are equal to him so you can pay too you can afford to pay for your food no you you know no you are with me you will I will pay because if you pay you are insulting me are you getting the point do you guys understand me it's not because he is a you know he's better than a Western man no because he look at you down you are under his com this what the you see this is why this is why the verse there it says be, why the man he is in charge do you remember guys why the man is in charge who remember the verse why because they spend of their property do you understand people He spent his money on you so he can enslave you. Is that because he is a good guy? You are, he, he spent his money, so now you have to be what? You have to be obedient. And I'm talking about my own culture. You know, I'm coming from there. And even some Arab Christians, they do that too. I mean, they think because they spend some money on you, it means you they own you. And actually, this is the mentality of many people. They spend some money on you, they think you are owned by them, right? Okay, I paid, you know, I paid. So it's like you you are doing a service for in return. So that's like a prostitution. And actually, Muhammad he promotes prostitution. If you remember the hadith where it says that uh, any any women and, and, and male and female. They agree to have sex together for a payment, you know. And the Muslim look here in the translation. They don't translate honestly. They say to you, look, look at this translation. Allah Apostle said, if a man and a woman agree, and between two bracket, to do temporarily marriage. What is that? What do you mean a man and a woman they do temporarily marriage? You know what I mean? Have you ever heard of a cult like this? A man and the women they agree to do what? Uh, sex uh, is that, is that sex because they love each other? No. Here, what Muhammad is talking about, there is a condition. If we search right now in Prophet Google, let us do that. We can ser search for conditions of mutal. Let's see. I will search in English so you can read with me. Conditions of muta. There's conditions. What is the conditions? Let me find you. The conditions. All right. The four pillars of muta. This is what this is a Muslim website. Don't say Christian Prince making things up, blah blah blah. You know, I know you Muslim. You know, the funny thing about the Muslims. You you bring uh, you bring a cucumber. 
you make it hold it in his hand you ask him what is this he said to you this is Apple okay you put it in his mouth and you ask him to bite bite it what is this um, uh, this is Apple you make him uh, you know chew okay how it tastes uh, tastes like Apple so you show it to him you put it in his mouth still he deny and he don't want to say yes this is what it is so this is what we do we show it to them and for the and still they will say to me liar so this is a Muslim website the four pillars of muta what is the four pillars of those women who you enjoy give them their appointed wages guys do you see the word wages people women ladies do you see the word wages okay here we have an opportunity for you ladies who want to make some money who is a lady here she like to make some money so number one pillar chapter 4 verse number 24 they have to get paid its wages okay to get paid for what in the same verse it says they see they did not post the whole verse it says for you enjoy yet okay enjoy what it the woman is not it you know what I mean when you say you enjoy yet okay enjoy what do we call women it what do you think guys what is it that it goes to what her vagina for you enjoy yet you pay her wages let us go to Quran chapter 4 you see here they post for us little part of the verse not the whole part let us go to chapter 4 verse number 24 <clears throat> okay it says uh, so that seek them with your worth huh and here they say honest with luck what honest I mean and then uh, seek them contact give them their partition as a duty what is that let us change the translation I mean the translation have nothing to do with the verse let us go to different translator you see right away when we we change the translation the translation change everything that's why I say you know you cannot learn Islam really from somebody who don't know Arabic very well right yeah the word for marriage is zawaj zawaj you know zawaj this is the tradition the traditional language word you know okay uh, or to say the official one and here you will see okay seek uh, marriage uh, by money Bridal money given to the by the husband to the wife in the time of the marriage That's not true And look from your property desiring chastity not com committing illegal sexual intercourse So those who of whom you enjoyed Sexual relationship give them their wages. So you see here. They try, try to fabricate the translation, but we, we get the point so when your money is due when the money is due to the women here it says in arabic for you enjoy yet enjoy her vagina here in the translation they translate it as what you enjoy their sexual relationship because they are trying to hide the ugliness enjoy it it goes to enjoy their vagina so because you enjoy their vagina you have to pay them this is why a muslim man if he marry a woman temporarily or not temporarily he don't enjoy yet he don't pay do you know let us say you know because look, okay I'm, uh, I'm I have a contract with the women she is supposed to have a contract sexual contract of being my wife but she did not go to the bed then I don't have to pay so the due is due only after she take off her panty and then we enjoy yet and then she can get paid now we go to back to the Muslim website so here the first pillar that you have you have to give them their appointed wages because you enjoy it and now look guys read carefully with me I'm not the one who's saying that I'm not the one saying that this is more of in the front of you all right uh, <clears throat>
are all employed the the women <laughs> the women she is an employee <laughs> she is employed uh, let's let's go down a little bit because the article is wrong very long um look guys read with me carefully does it say as it is a rented women does it say muta considered as a kind of rental or i'm lying do you see it guys does it say muta is a kind of rental and she is a rented woman Who is a Muslim want to say something to us? Who is a Muslim want to say something to us? Rented women. So you want to marry a man? He believe that you are rented women. If you tell me that your husband he don't believe, he's, he, so why you call him a Muslim then? Why he claim that he's a Muslim? Why he call himself a Muslim? Okay, call yourself Hindu. Uh, say I'm an atheist. The second you call him a Muslim, this is his belief. So stop being stupid. Rented women. You are not a wife in Islam. You are rented women. I hope those who make videos, I mean, uh, out of my videos, they can cut the videos and make it short and like, you know, cut this part and show everybody. And maybe I should make a short video uh, about this topic, rented women. Maybe tomorrow I will make a video about rented women. So where is where is the marriage? Where is the you see marriage in Christianity is a holy relationship. Marriage in Islam does not exist. You are a rented woman, and you get paid for what you are rented for. That's why the man he can text you message and he divorce you because he you are just an employee. So how you can share? family with somebody believe you are nothing but a rented woman and anytime he can replace you you get older you know a man okay well i marry now uh you see a man he can uh, uh he marry you when you were 20 you are young beautiful etc and then after a few years you gave birth and then your body change and etc and then he find a new rental woman that's it the only reason for a Muslim man to stay with a one woman if he cannot afford it. This is what the Quran say, not me. Correct? If he can afford it, he have the right to replace you. Like now there is a bigger TV, you know, 65 inch, 70 inch. Why you want to stay with the one is 20, 20 inch? <laughs> this is the mentality. So how we can consider this as a marriage? What you will do if you are married to a Muslim, you think you are married, and the guy, he decide to invite th three girls he just married, uh, and he want to have sex with them in your house. What you can do about it? Nothing. Nothing. What you call the police? They would do, they <laughs> Even if you call the police to say, my husband is beating me and he's raping me, they will go and take his side. Do you know in the Middle East that if a woman, she leave the house of the husband without his permission, the man he can call the police and you will become wanted in the whole country you will stop in any checkpoint any airport and they will put the cups in your hands and they will bring you home like a goat this is called bayt al which means the the house of obedience law the house of obedience the man he can arrest you he called the police my wife she left she left me Okay, the police right away they will make a report. What's her name? Give us her information, and then she will become wanted as if she is really a big fat criminal. And the second you get arrested, they will take you like a goat, and you will be humiliated in the front of the public because everybody will disrespect you because you are a bad woman, you're disgusting. It doesn't matter if your husband beat you or whatever he is doing. Still, you have to obey and you have to stay. So I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if if what I say, I can show you tons of things. I mean, you can search and search. 
Uh, but don't be fooled by a woman. She say to you, "I married a Muslim man. He's a nice guy." And, and, and okay, let us see after a few years. Let us see. Let us see for how long this nice guy will be there. Hmm? Oh. Any uh, and then by the way, here they continue explaining the formula. The formula. There's a formula. What the formula? You have to make a declaration. Since it is a contract, do you see the word contract? Did I say to you there is no marriage? It's a contract. Did I say contract? It's a contract. What is contract? Contract for sex. Rent. She's rented women. You know, we did not make it. Up. It's in front of you. Huh? She is rental. I mean, even the words they use is really beyond imagination. Like rental, muta consider as a kind of rental. I mean, what kind of a cult this cult is? And now you have to make a declaration, declaration for the rental. You rented this woman. You should tell. Okay, I rent you. So the woman she says, okay, I agree to rent me. Hmm? Yeah, they say to me, you are a liar. <laughs> In the definition of rental, <laughs> I mean, look how deep this cult is. They want to give you now the definition. Okay, they told you now the wife you get, she is a rental. So shouldn't we tell you what rental mean? Definition for it. All right. Yeah, yeah. The word nikah is the F word. Is exactly the F word. Even Muhammad he used it. You see, in the hadith, Muhammad, a man he committed, uh, you know, sex. So he did. He said to him, "Did you touch her? Did you uh, wink to her? Did you kiss her, or you F her?" And let me show you the word in English in Arabic. Right here we go. This is the word in, in in Arabic as it is in the screen. Did you f her? If you go and read the translation in the English, they don't say did you f her. It, it, you, you can, they they translate as did you have sexual intercourse? But he did not say did you have sexual intercourse. This is the word f. Ask any Arab guy. Did you f her? All right. So you rent the women, and now you made an agreement. But this agreement have the conditions still. You have there is a formula. You have to make declaration for the contract of sex, because she is rental. Yes, but you have to announce it, and she have to accept, and she have to announce how much. The person, a man can be etc. Contract or only with Muslim or one of the people of the book. Look how nice they are. They can do contract of muta. You want to be rented? Who is a who is a, a, a Jewish woman or a Christian woman here? She like to be rented by a Muslim woman. Look, there, there's an there, there's an empty uh, 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 you know available. We have vacancies for jobs. Look how nice Islam. They can hire only only a Muslim woman or a Christian or Jews for this job to be rented. I mean, what do you want more? What's wrong with you? It's a great job opportunity. Two hours sex, you get paid. And by the way, there's no need for divorce. Before the man he put his pant on, the divorce is initiated because in this contract, you have to say for how long. This is why they are coming like here. They say the person and then you will see they say to you uh, the timing you see the time period you see the muddha the time period which means you have to agree both of you for how long so if you agree like let's say you are going in the elevator and uh, you are a male and she is a female and you both of you are Muslims and you like her she is beautiful you can do muta especially if you live in the Middle East the elevator can 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 lose electricity for 10 uh, you know 10 hours so you say to her, can I do muta with you? 
and then she say how much you will pay um, you say um you don't you don't really look good so I'll give you a, a price of a hamburger five dollars and then you have to say for how long you see Islam is a very much it's a very decent religion you cannot just say I want to have sex with you and I will pay you no you have to say for how long and then the women she have to repeat after you and she say I agree read with me guys read, read quick for me I'm not saying that this is in front of you Imam was once asked if it's possible to conclude a contract of muta for one or two hours <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, um, uh, okay. One or two hours. And they call it marriage? They, they call it marriage. And look at the answer of the Abdul, the Sheikh, the Imam. He says, no time limits. Which means, you can make it two hours or one hour, doesn't matter. You can make it five, fifteen minutes. You can make it a day. This is a decision you make. All right. So, a Sheikh Al Ansari, uh, in all the hadith, indicate that it's principle for for the agreed upon time period either to be joined in the moment or concluding a contract to be postponed. <laughs> Not now, I'm busy now. So our muta will start tomorrow at six o'clock. <laughs> Unbelievable. I I love it. Hmm. <coughs> you want to contact me? Uh, people, they will post my uh, pal talk. You can contact me there. So, I mean... You want to marry a Muslim? Oh, go ahead. Good luck. You know, for me, I do my duty to share my knowledge and foolishness. And here now, the payment. They call it the door. By the way, it's not called the door. It says the ujur, the wages. Even in their translation, if you go up, it says wages. You see? What door? Wages. It is literally wages. It's what the Quran says in Arabic. Ujurahun. So after all of this, you discuss how much the money she will get paid. The contract must mention a door of known, the wages of or a known property, whether in cash or kind of whose amount is safe from increase or decrease. Like, come on, we have to make an agreement. I will give you 10 watermelon. Those stone water mirror is for you if you take off your panty. So to make it simple, when you want to have a relationship, you have first to find someone you have the same definition for life around you. Definition very simple. I mean when we say when we say this is right and this is wrong What is right for him is very wrong for you. So how you can marry this man? Are you getting my point? In order to have relationship to live together even if you are a believer or not believer this is your business Maybe you're an atheist But living with somebody you have to reach an agreement in the beginning a man a Muslim man He will say whatever you want. Oh, don't worry. I am uh, I am very open-minded You can wear a shorter skirt and slowly 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 he start putting pressure on you But being aggressive on you showing you he don't like what you are doing so he will force you to change the way you dress and After that he will ask you to change the way you talk and after that he will ask you to convert to Islam So what was Calling himself open-minded, uh, he will end to be something else. But anyway, I think there's many women they like to be rented, so it's a good opportunity to make money. You know, I remember once a stupid woman, and I sorry to say the word stupid, but she is. She she contacted me in Paltok, and she said she married to an old uh, guy. I think it was in Kuwait, very old man. He's like 95, 97 years old. And she is in her 20, 30, something like that. I, I forgot the details, really. This is a long time ago. 
and she said to me uh, uh, according to Sharia law how much I will get <laughs> if he die stupid women I told her nothing she said what do you mean I said you are not a Muslim you get nothing in Sharia law a wife she is not a Muslim she inherits zero totally zero and by the way even if you inherit you inherit nothing anyway I mean maybe he's rich but still you have many wives and you have tons of children uh, the male children they will have the big fortune of the money and then the wives they will get a little anyway but if, because you are not a Muslim you will get nothing zero a non-believer cannot inherit it a believer that is an Islamic law so I hope people will are learning and you know I do my best and people they are free to do whatever they want right you see always when you talk about marriage you have you know like Maybe I should make a different video. Maybe I should finish this one and start a new one. You see, the problem is most of men and women, they are not mature. Uh, I will try to explain to you with my limited English because this is a very deep topic. And, you know, sometimes, a, a lot of time, actually, I find my, I mean, I want to say things, but I don't know how to express it because my English is not really too much helping me. Uh, Maturity is not about you look like a male and you have a male private part and you can have orgasm and Same for the women Maturity is not about you having breast and you know, but a human being is very silly and very shallow So they go, you know, usually people they meet maybe in night club or a place and you know the guy is cool He gave her a drink and he is funny and he is cute and then next we go to the bed and even I did not ask him his name yet and then supposedly they have a relationship I mean this is the most stupid thing often happen between people so you meet a man and then supposedly suddenly you say you know what I cannot really live without you uh, when I get married but still you know nothing about this person he know nothing about you because all the interest in the beginning it's about having fun you know what it's called relationship like you know friends would benefit and then the a friend with benefit became uh, uh, became uh, or become uh, a marriage but you do not know him yet because you never have a serious discussion you never have serious topic you never have serious life you have fun life we go to the club we have we'll go to the dinner we go to the picnic we go Fred is inviting her here and there so it's fun to be together but this is the fun part and then when you get involved with real life then you notice that this person you get married from is not what you think is far away from your dreams but he was the same as before but because you were a fool and you never ask a serious question before you were busy asking him what the music you like Which actor you like? <laughs> I mean, all of you, you know what I'm talking about, right? Silly questions. I mean, what, what that will make a difference? I mean, what? So they ask all kind of stupid questions, but they never go deep to inspire the the personality of this person. What uh, what what is your favorite wine? Ah, I like that wine. I mean, what a, what a conversation! Supposedly now this is a deep conversation. So when when you are shallow, you get a shallow marriage, and you get a shallow relationship, because it was shallow. It is stay shallow will end shallow, and shallow is very simple to be destroyed. When little wind come, you have no roots. The wind will unblock your plant so easy. I don't know if if what I said is clear or not. Red rubbish saying, "Can God die?" CP. Hey, red rubbish. This is stupid of you, and uh, this is very normal for a Muslim to be to be like that, because 
when you say to me can God die you are saying that God he is God if he did not die correct guys is that correct let's go to move to this Abdul let me teach you how to get Abdul busted you see I you know I never saw uh, 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 those people they have low IQ the second you say to me can God die you just said Jesus is God and I will tell you why Abdul in your religion Jesus did not die so I want to ask you why Jesus did not die I'm using your logic so in Islam Jesus then must be God because he did not die after 2,000 years of Christ was exist in Israel you Muslims believe he's alive so this is how shallow they are and we are talking about shallow you know one of the things I fear in my life is stupidity I don't know I feel myself sometime I want to vomit I can't imagine myself with somebody is stupid actually maybe this is why I'm still not married I fear stupidity because you see uh, there's something happening around you something broke you can fix it you can change it but what you can do with a, a wife or a husband he's stupid look at this guy imagine you marry this guy Imagine you marry a guy who have little brain like this. Hey, Jesus, how Jesus can be God? Can God die? <laughs> you Abdul, you Muslims, you yourself, you believe that if a human being he die, he will be tortured in the grave. Now I want to ask you, you are dead and you will be tortured. <laughs> Stupid. You are dead. So how you believe that a human being die and that will make him not God, but yet he's dead and he is going to be tortured. And not only that, there's 99 snakes have nine heads. They will go inside your anus. I don't know how big your anus is, but I would like to see how big the garage will be in the judgment day. And this is one of the reasons Muslims don't dare to debate me because they are no match. They are shallow shallow in their knowledge shallow in their thinking and shallow in their uh, uh, you know the way they, they present even their case right so you know always when you wanna you know and this is my advice for everybody and you know you don't have to listen to me I mean you maybe are uh, maybe you know no know, know better uh, I'm not here to tell you what to do I'm just sharing my opinion that don't be shallow when you meet somebody otherwise you will have a shallow relationship even if he is a man of God even if he's a Christian so what you have to go deep you have to in you know the, the, like uh, uh, ask serious questions about serious matters uh, even speak about politics even speak about uh, uh, issues happening in real life don't waste your time talking about the music and the uh, uh, you know silly stuff and you know I mean that that will not take you anywhere you have to really to see how much you both uh, how much deep you are and how much you are in agreement or disagreement and what is uh, what is the biggest disagreement between you and how serious it is same as what is the biggest agreement between you and how serious it is right watch my blood pressure Oh, okay. Uh, so this is my advice for everybody. Don't go by the look. There's many people, you know, you know, uh, you know. When I when I was a kid, I was a teenage, and then I saw a girl. She was so beautiful, very very beautiful, and I want to talk to her. You know, a kid like a teenage. I don't know. I was like maybe 15, 16 years old. And all all time I'm talking about her like tomorrow I'm going to talk to her tomorrow I'm going to talk to her you cannot believe how beautiful she is and then the second day come and I decide to talk to her and I went and the second she start talking and I saw how silly she is I could not believe it even at that time I'm just a kid I could not believe it that I wasted the day yesterday thinking about how I'm going to make an excuse to talk to her silly stupid um, you know shallow uh, i mean ah 
she's so beautiful so beauty can disappear beauty disappear fast and that is natural to happen so it can disappear because the person he's try is start as you know talking ugly acting ugly uh, uh, being bad you, you forget about the beauty the beauty is something you see first impression you will be impressed by it okay she is so beautiful or maybe he's so handsome but then after that you don't see that after that you see just the person whoever he is the beauty will be normal even a person like in the language today they call someone is beautiful somebody is ugly but I don't believe in that because ugly can be beautiful too so you see someone first time oh he don't look good but you start talking to this person man this person really good to talk to I enjoy his company or her company so the beauty in the beginning maybe attract you but it can be fake and it's you know it will, will later will, will will destroy your life so try to be more deep and not to judge as you know as they say they say you know you judge the book by its cover and there's many people actually they buy the cover of the book they don't buy the book this is why if you go and watch TV you will see a bunch of uh, girls wearing short skirt you know I don't see any women there she don't look good I mean look at them uh, open Fox News what is that it's like a show in the morning a bunch of girls wearing a very short skirt they are blonde and they are tall and they are and even their teeth is perfect the, their eyelashes is like an umbrella their hair is wow I mean and their smile is is is, is there even before there's a joke fake a smile fake face fake, because people they learn to be fake they like to see something fake you know we we used to this culture fake is appealing right fake is appealing and by the way maybe if you stay like if you talk to me um, in person you will not like what I talk because I'm a serious person um, and I, may, I can be very funny too but still you will not like because it, it put too much pressure on you you know because even my joke is going to turn to be something would make you think and thinking is very I mean it's not good for many people why I want to think I mean thinking why I want to think right and you know sometimes foolish person foolish man they will be perfect with foolish women try to find your match but the problem then foolish man foolish wife we will have foolish family that will be a disaster <laughs> all right <clears throat> anyway uh, you got to give people chance you cannot automatically assume no I'm not at I'm not did you guys so this is what you understand from me uh, Mika this is what you understand from my speech okay let me tell you what Mika you did there's a Saudi guy he went to a class about philosophy an Arab guy like me you know and we are Arab we are very good in philosophy we are the one who made philosophy actually just joking so the guy he went to the class to learn about philosophy logic the class that day it was about logic so uh, the Arab guy like me let us say it's me so nobody will feel offended said to the teacher what is logic the teacher said uh, well logic is to know something from something the guy he said I don't understand what does that mean he said well I will ask you a question now and from that question we will see how we can find more information about you I said okay that's interesting so the teacher said to the man to the student uh, do you have a uh, chain in your home chain uh, the guy he said yes I said uh-huh now as long as you have a chain that's mean you have a dog the guy he looked at the teacher like wow yeah true I have a dog how do you know he said as long as you have a dog that's mean you have a big yard you have a garden he said, this is true yes he said as long as you have a chain you have a dog you have a yard and yard and garden that's mean you have a nice house big house he said yeah he said, as long as you have a dog, you have a chain, you have a yard, you have a big house, that house needs a lot of care. 
and that's mean your mother she is a very good woman taking care of the house such a house, big house like this the the guy was like wow and now what he learned that because of the chain he was able to learn that his mother is a good woman logic so now this guy he want to practice uh he want to practice the logic which he'll just learn from the teacher so a good woman according to the logic can be known if you have a chain or not so he went in the street he said to a guy first one he met hey 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 do you have a chain do you have a chain the guy he said no he said okay your mother is a whore Because his mother she don't have a chain. This is what he this is what he learned from the logic and This is what you did make in Mecca and From all the speech I made you come to the conclusion that I was talking about the chain and the one who don't have a chain is a Take it easy change your drink uh, I don't know it's <laughs> Uh, you see like don't be shallow. You are not listening to me. You are not even listening I'm trying to explain in details and still you don't understand what I'm saying. So what I would what I would say what I will do So now we go and say okay Christian Prince he said uh, if you talk about the music that's mean you are shallow No, no, I did not say that Talk about the music nothing wrong about the music. Why not? Don't be shallow We are saying you have to dig deep and try to understand the personality of the person ask about something serious speak about divorce speak about children speak about how family can work and try to see really a serious opinion not just uh, trying to say something in front of you talk about a person who have a problem let's see what this opinion of this guy about this problem how he will solve it if he was in that case and then you will know what he would do with you if both of you became in such a situation Right. Yes, a uh, princess. She is asking. Oh, this is not for me. She is asking if a Muslim is if the prophet he uh, he came to your house and he like your wife. What you will do? Actually, according to the Muslims, according to Sharia law, if the prophet his eyes fall into a woman and he like to have her, the husband he must divorce her immediately. I am married. No, thanks God, I'm not. All right. Jesus is a messenger before Abraham was. I am Jesus. Yeah, going to convert me. I don't know what Enzo is trying to say to us. <laughs> Yeah, I fear stupidity because there's no solution for stupidity. You see, there's there's ignorance and there's stupidity. Ignorance, we can fix it. Stupidity, we cannot. You know what I mean, guys? Like, for me, I am ignorant in English. As an example, I make a lot of mistakes in sometimes pronouncing or grammar or, you know, I'm ignorant in English. That can be fixed. You can study more and more, you know, practice, etc. It can be fixed. But stupid person, you cannot make him... Like in China, they say... He left as a donkey. He never came back as a horse. Yeah, how you can make a donkey a horse? You cannot. All right. Same time, there is there is a, there is something always you have to uh, think about it seriously. Never ever have a relationship with someone is selfish. Someone is selfish, he, he will never love you. That's it, selfish. Man or woman doesn't matter. He don't even love his parents. He don't even love his sister. He don't, he don't love the whole world. He love himself. Selfish person is the most disgusting human being ever you can be with. Never. Never, ever. Be with a person he think about the whole world as me Everything is about him or about her 
that will be one of the biggest mistake you do someone he believe I love me he will never love you she will never love you they are selfish and there is many ways to know if a person is selfish or not right and I'm not saying anything to insult anyone I'm just sharing with you what I believe take it easy this is why I say uh, my uh, the way I talk sometimes it can be um, you know harsh in some people but uh, the one who really try to help you is the one who will speak harsh to you not the one who's you know say things you like to hear uh, this is the problem in this life you know people they say to you things you like to hear right it's like imagine you dress nicely and you are going to a wedding party okay and you are wearing a nice suit then you meet the first friend the second friend the third friend and all of them they shake hands with you how are you but then you will go in the bathroom and you notice that there is a poop of a bird in, the sh in your shoulder and not even one of them told you that you have something there or in your head that's me none of them is your friends correct if they care for you they will tell you right away hey there's something wrong there fix it but, but they will not tell you because they don't care for you actually they are trying to make, make you look bad right it's like two females one of them she is jealous from the other female the other female she is let us say she whatever she have something special so she asked her do this dress look good in me because she hate you and that dress is ugly she would say it looks so wonderful so good but if she really care for you she will say this is bad dress that you don't look good in it All right why love cp and jesus jesus is above i don't know what does that mean and why you want to love cp anyway and i'm no one how you can love me i have nobody loves me anyway you see you don't even know what the word love you are attracted to maybe me talking saying things to you funny you laugh etc you enjoy so you love things about me but you don't love me because you do not know me and there again we have to be don't be shallow don't be shallow you know you love an actor because he is in that movie you know it sounds good like you know I like you but if you maybe if you sit with him for five minutes you get disgusted right anyway uh, and actually this is my problem with people because I am honest with them I say I speak my mind and people don't like that you have to be hypocrite if you want to be liked by people um, the more you are a hypocrite the more people like you that's how life is Listening to the queen speak. <laughs> uh, don't make me speak now about the queen and her family, corrupt family. Anyway. Uh, la language for me is not really a problem because as long as I can deliver my my, my ideas, um, you know, it's okay. Uh, for sure I wish I can like my my skills is better because a lot of time I find myself very limited I'm using like maybe maybe my English is comparing to yours you guys who they are born in the West etc maybe maybe I'm like three percent to you in the ability of talking expressing yourself but imagine even with my three percent still I can make a you know the discussion come to be clear I mean most it mostly right so even though it's very limited still thank God it's working yeah I am an ex-muslim no I'm not I wasn't I never been stupid to be a Muslim for a second 
how you can be a Muslim how somebody can believe that God will make your penis endless I mean this is not even smart okay I'm so uh, you are six foot two tall and then your penis is in China okay and and uh, you will be lucky actually if your penis did not go in the jungle of Brazil do you know what they have there those ants they will eat it alive they will think it's a soldier so I don't know how a person can be a Muslim. I don't know how, how you can accept such an idea. I mean, this is silly. A human being is very shallow. Or what? What if your penis go in the Amazon River and you have those uh, fish who eat uh, what they call them? Those fish, scary fish. I mean, I don't want to think about it. This is very painful. In a second, it's going to disappear, and Allah will make it longer, and it's going to eat it again, and Allah will make it longer. Right. No, no, uh, yeah, par, Parna, Parna, Parana, Parana, I don't know what the name, I mean, uh, yeah, especially in the movie, they make them like dangerous, I mean, the idea itself, and the women, her vagina is English too, what is that, is that the tunnel between France and England, even that is like two hours, the vagina is English, whoa, whoa, whoa. so what does that mean, is that, is that uh, like a, uh, what they call those space uh, holes, you know, the space black hole. The vagina is endless. What is that black hole in the space? I mean, I don't know. It's, it's this so stupidity. How you can be a Muslim? <laughs> yeah, because in Arabic it says. Uh, 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 and وذلك, which means a vagina which fit for that it's endless as long as the, the, the penis is endless it says the vagina fit for that endless penis so it have to be in this too so in this vagina in this penis okay so the black hole in the space they now we know where they are they are there women they have them right No, Allah is not about he love a human sexual. There's no Allah. This is Muhammad. He knew how corrupt a human being is. And he knew how the, 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 the devil come to you always through uh, the windows and doors. What do you like? You like food? You like sex? You like money? What do you want? Even if you like God, he will come to you through God. The devil, he always, isn't it the Messiah? He says to you, be aware of false prophet. They will come to you in the clothes of a sheep. This will come to who? To the Christians. Because the Christians, they love God, right? So he will not come to them from the door of uh, sex and etc. No, he will come to you from the from the door of God. He will dress as a sheep because you like the sheep, you know. It look decent, beautiful, honest. So he will dress as a sheep. So what 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 the Messiah is saying? That's the the the, the Satan. He transform himself in the way you like. He can come to you in politics, like you know, you go and vote for abortion, killing babies, you know, and they convince you that this is the right of every woman. I mean, what this this what about a human being? So we defend the rights of animals from being killed, but we kill babies. So always the devil he try to 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 make what you will do acceptable. Right, so he come to you from many uh, many doors, from many ways, or in many 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 uh, uh, forms. And Islam is one of them. You know, uh, uh, the devil in Islam. You know, he tried to present himself that he's God, who wants you to believe in one God, and uh, who wants you to be a better person. But at the same time, go and kill them wherever you find them. Right. How you are God and the black dog is the devil. I mean, you see, like if if you think about this story here, are you guys enjoying the night with me here? And maybe there's the people who they are in, in Asia, they are like it's morning for them. You know, when Muhammad says as an example that the black dog is the devil 
think about it you know try to be I mean maybe you are not used to think deeply but try to think about it just beyond that it's stupid to say that right it's more than stupid this is something really serious because if I can make you believe to hate an animal because of his color that's not only it's this is not about stupid no more this is about how dangerous this cult is because here you decided to kill your brain and to kill what God gave you as a gift which is called logic use it think and you decide to accept a person saying to you that the black dog is the devil why is the why is the devil because it's black why is not the, the yellow dog or what about the, the red dog what about the white dog no only the black dog is the devil so many of us you know they've been they, you you've been feeded some information during your lifetime like the, the crusade the crusade are bad people they are the devil right because just the second you call the crusade but the crusade they were fighting back they were not attacking they were attacked it was the Christians who were attacked but on the schools always they attack the crusade so you grow up you grow up and uh, the, the crusade or is the devil same here the black dog is the devil you don't even want to think you don't even want to search you don't want to study okay let us see let us see how the black dog is the devil is that true is that possible or we just take things as people they say to us just because somebody says something and we take it and this guy supposedly they call him prophet right So many of us, we are victims of accepting what people say, and we take it as, a, let us say, a scale of life. The scale of life is what? Is what somebody said, and we don't want to think about it. Like somebody is a racist, he, you know, he don't like black people, so he starts saying bad things about black people. But is that true? Well, there's black people, they are very good, and there's black people, they are bad. But this is the same for the white people too. So why we are saying the black people are not good then? That's not right. Same as we cannot say the, the white people are bad or good. So we have to say, we have to say what is right. Here, it's a mindset forced by religion. And then you block the idea of studying and researching to see if this is true. Because the one who said that is a holy prophet. Do you believe in the black hole are real? I have no idea, my friend. I did not see one. If I go there one day, I will take a selfie. I will send it to you. All right? Like, you know, uh, uh, it's, uh, they say, uh, they claim, they, I don't know. Maybe it's true. I don't know. Maybe. Well, but there, here there's a question what they call the black hole. <laughs> They call it a black hole because simply they can see nothing. So how you can describe it if you can see nothing? <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. For me, it's not uh, too much convincing as a... Uh, like, you know, like uh, always when they present to you even science, most of the science you have about the space is a theory. It's not really a science. Most of it. For sure, not all of it. But... Theory is a theory until it's proven to be true. But in our culture today, sadly, if something coming from a scientist who work in NASA, that's it. It must be not. This is not a theory. It is science. That fact, no. All of science is based on theories. You see, when uh, when when you wanna you wanna uh, uh, like I make a theory, I can pass and go to the space. That was a theory for a long time. And then I was able to do that. So the theory, became, the theory became right. That became true. So most of the science, the or, the origin of it is a theory. How we can uh, let us find out how this works. It's a practice. So when they speak about something, they did not go there. They did not really practice it or see it or go inside it. Then, until that day, we cannot confirm to be true or not. And I don't know if you understand my logic or not. <clears throat> holes are always dark not necessarily you see again the color can be can be fooling us <laughs> you 
you see one one thing about the the like uh, colors colors is deceiving by the way uh, I don't know if you study colors when you see somebody is white doesn't mean he's white actually he's black because white is the color your body reflect usually it's a it's a color you don't have so if you see something red that's mean he is not red or the color is, is not really red he is not painted by red he's, he's painted by a color suck all the colors reflect that one so always we are be, being deceived by knowledge uh, about colors or, or or what we see around us and seeing not only not always is true seeing can be deceiving all of you you know something is called mirage right if you drive in the desert if you drive in the desert you you see you really you see water you know you see really your eyes showing you water you see it all the way you drive in the street you see water 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 but there's no water so sometimes seeing can be deceiving all right people wish to call Zach and Nick. well if we call Zach and Nick, he will he will talk about the black uh, holes and the space and the and then he will, uh, you know, he will convert you to Islam. Yeah. Doesn't the Quran say free slaves? And this is a good question. No, the Quran doesn't say really free slave to free them. The Quran says uh, it's a penalty. Let me explain to you. What do you like most of your property? What the Arab like most of their property? They are slaves. So I will make you free a slave if you do this, if you break the law of Allah, if you if you kill a Muslim. So this is was a penalty, not a reward for the slave. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Guys, do you understand me? Like I say to you, if you if you cross and the light was red. I will force you to free a slave. So I'm I'm not saying free slaves for the sake of the slaves. I'm saying free the slave for the sake of enforcing the law which you hate. So if you kill a Muslim, okay, free a slave. So now you don't not kill a Muslim. But that is a dangerous too. Because you free a slave, we capture them again. There's many hadith of Muhammad about people, they free slaves, and Muhammad, he slayed them again. Right? Uh, Sahih Bukhari is full of them. Uh, so what the point of freeing a slave, and then you will bring more slaves? Muhammad, he did not abolish the slave that you were. You know, he, he approved it. The Quran says, I mean, you can rape them. And Muhammad himself didn't he accept slaves gifts from the ruler of uh, Egypt or Alexandria yeah he did Maria the Coptia and her cousin and her sister and a bunch of people he accept gifts as a human All right no here how many Jesus how many slaves he have how many slaves you have never never okay what about paul uh, what about peter what about john all the messiah and his apostle none of them have slaves all in islam muhammad and his companion all of them they own slaves and by thousands so if islam is against slavery then okay why they have slaves then <laughs> We attack the enemies, we take their women, we kill the men, we take the children, we divide the children between us as slaves, and then they give us lecture about we are against slavery. Look at this. I heard that Allah Messenger, I heard Atiyah, etc., etc., we are presented to the Allah Messenger in the day of uh, uh, Quraydh. 
those who have a pubic hair had a growing will be killed so now Muhammad attacked this tribe they are Jews he make the men strip and the children too and any child he have little hair around his pubic area he will be slaughtered do you see it and the rest they made them slaves you see here they says let us go let us go to the to be alive not to go to be free all right I'm fine the hadith anyway I think we have enough for today so guys did you learn something good I hope people will download the video because we are not going to keep it long in my page and I hope yesterday did you enjoy the time with the uh, David Jude yesterday was it good did you like it you know, many of you they text me they says why you don't be there you don't be there okay he invited me I went there to make you happy uh, and always you know when somebody is speak about something uh, a foolish man after he speak for two minutes you will you will notice he's, he's a fool actually always always stay away from a person he don't talk because there's no way you will know if he is smart or foolish or stupid. The more you talk, the more you get busted. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, well, I'm, I'm a Luan, you know. Uh, I'm a Luan. Uh, <laughs> you know what? Uh, uh, Isa he is asking me that. What if somebody have a he, he's, a, he's a color blind? I don't know if I told you the story once. Uh, once uh, a, a priest uh, this is an Orthodox Church you know I, I visit many churches and I do seminars everywhere uh, this priest he called me he said there's a guy he come to our church every Sunday after the service you know after the service like the churches they have like a coffee people sit together you know so this guy this is a, this is an Arab Christian church this guy is an atheist he come to the church and he start making fun of those nice Christians and they are not rude you know they don't know what to do with him so the, the priest he said you know there's a guy he come and I know that nobody really can can deal with him as you do but can you do come next uh, weekend I said well I really I will be busy but just just to, to help you no problem if he is there call me and I will come which mean I will come really after the service because I have a room to open etc so anyway I, I, uh, uh, he called me. He said the guy is there. So I went, and he did not talk in the beginning. He did not say anything, and then suddenly uh, he said, eh, "You Christians are really funny. Uh, you want to convince me that Jesus he put some mud in the eye of somebody and he made him see." <laughs> And imagine he's saying that in a church I mean not inside the church I mean in the building like where they drink coffee and tea and those Christians they are nice people they don't uh, you know they are not rude uh, so I said to him uh, I was waiting for him to talk you know I'm there just for him but he have no idea so I said okay well uh, can you tell me what do you do for a living because before they told me he's an eye doctor that's why I asked him can you tell me you know I know he's an eye you know he said okay he said I am an eye doctor why I said well it's really funny because as I know that eye doctors all what they do they put sand in the top of the eyes of somebody and he will see better he said what he said don't you eye doctors that's what you do you put sands on the eyes of people and they see better he said, yeah, but this is a different story. This is different. I said, hold on. If you exist 2,000 years ago and you say to somebody, 
I'm going to put sands in the front of your eyes and I will make you see better don't you think he will think that you are crazy and stupid he said yeah so this is exactly what you are doing and he look around him uh, and you see the silence the people are quiet waiting for him what he will say you know uh, he said um, yeah actually you are right like um, he will accuse me to be stupid and crazy I said and you are <laughs> and since then he never come to the church he called the priest he says that guy who was then there is he there is he coming is he still coming to the church he's not coming no more he called the priest he said this guy is still coming is still he coming is there he's coming you know yeah no he's not a, he's a atheist he's an atheist yeah but I mean the logic you can use your logic but sometimes always you have to use the logic of the person to get him busted we as a Christian when we talk to people we use our logic like a guy, a Muslim, like you saw the Muslim when he come, he starts saying to me, Jesus died, how he can be God, right? I did not use my logic, I use his logic. Use their logic, you will torture them. You use your logic, you're wasting your time. They cannot deny their logic, they, they just use their logic. They, use it. So try always not to use your own logic, use their all right yeah and you know i was nice in the, the the priest he asked me to be very i mean he, he told me please i like i want you to get him busted but be nice you know we are christians this is why i stopped going to the abn tv abn tv each time i want to go on tv the owner of the tv he speak to me please uh, christian prince please be nice to the guy you know we are christians and we need to be you know and okay i know you give me a headache like 15 minutes giving me a lecture about how to be nice with the guys why are you bringing me i'm not nice like they want me to get the guy busted with, by being nice how we can do that All right How often you do deprive yourself from this logic? Well, depending on the logic, you know, sometimes logic is a, uh, logic is a good word, but sometimes describes something foolish. As we uh, as we mentioned, the story of the chain. You remember the guy who asked, uh, "Do you have a chain?" You know. So logic is a as a as a definition is good, but uh, the contain sometimes is stupid. Depending on the person, you see, the logic of a Muslim is what. That he prayed to Allah five times, he hid he hid the, the infidels, he go to heaven, or he go and kill himself or kill others, and then he go to heaven and Allah will give him virgins and they have their legs open. Logic, this is logic, but this is stupid logic. Right? There is a logic, and this is there is stupid logic. Everybody have his own logic in life. Uh, well, he can call me maybe next time. No, I don't feel like talking to any Abdul. Everybody, he think he have uh, the right logic. Every one of us. Like, uh, even, uh, you know, even when you eat, you have your logic of food. All your life is based on your own logic, but th that doesn't mean it's really a logic. It's this is your logic, which means the way of reasoning. You know. Uh, and this is why you always you have to try. This is why we are talking about not to be shallow. Try to understand the logic of the person. From his logic, you will know how smart, how fool he is. How stupid he is! How you know? You want to meet me? Why? What is your logic, Malika? Why you want to meet me? See, here we have a logic. Why you want to meet me? That is not logical for me. For you, it's a logic. You have your own reason. For me, I don't see a reason. All right?
house been okay house explain 355 maybe later you know we can today we have like a long topic and we are done um, thank you Diana I, I don't I, like you know sometime uh, maybe because like uh, sometimes the English is limited so people misunderstood me um, if you ever misunderstood me please ask me to repeat again or to explain more what I can do I mean we don't have a, I don't have if I if I do my program in Arabic for sure I would do one million times better Actually, there was, uh, you know, Arabic rooms. They asked me not to speak, you know, chat rooms. They said to me, uh, we talk, they, they run away. The Muslim, they run away. Because in Arabic, I'm like 100 times more powerful. It's my first language. In English, you find yourself very much limited. Very much, actually. Uh, but now it's a lot better than before. Before, even like I want to show you something in the screen, we don't have translation. You know, when I start doing teaching in the internet, there is no translation of Sahih Bukhari, all those websites, you can't find anything. So now we are like we are lucky. We have, you know, those websites, even the translation is false, but still we can at least we can show you, we can share with you. Um, not long time ago, we have zero of this. And the Muslims, they, they say, this. They see he's showing you in Arabic because he's lying. For those who know me for for long, uh, the Iranian TV they have a program about those who they are anti-Islam, and they choose my video from Pal to, from from uh, YouTube uh, as a as a, as the the dangerous people, the most dangerous person. Uh, if you watch that video, you will see I was even recording the the, the computer with my camcorder. You know, yeah, you know those uh, old camcorder camera. You know, so I'm holding the camera in my hand. Imagine. And I have the screen in front of me. I'm reading in Arabic, and then I'm recording, and then I have to load the video in the computer, and then after that, I have to, uh, you know, like do the recording to make it a file to be uploaded in YouTube, and then after that, the internet is the most horrible internet. For those who do not know, I don't know how old are you guys, but in the beginning when we have internet, it was the most horrible thing. It's so slow. It worked by the phone. Sometimes even the phone don't go through. You have to dial a number. I don't know how many of you remember those days. Do you guys remember? <laughs> Not like now. You have a very fast internet. You have the Wi-Fi. You have the cell. This is before cell phone. So uh, it was really hard. It take forever to load five minute videos. It's like a, like a surgery. Yeah, dial up. You dial up. Oh, the the, the number is busy, or your 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 modem is stuck. You know, your modem is stuck. Your modem cannot go. So it was really horrible. So now, like you know, you can. Uh, I mean, we have different world today. Not a different world. Uh. Okay, Emacs, uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, but most of people know, like now, maybe don't remember those old days, you know, how it used to be. So anyway, like, uh, to, to make a video before, it used to be really hard, very hard. Not like now, I can share with you on the screen, and uh, I go live. Uh, we, we can't compare. We can't compare. Life is so totally different from before. And and this is the funny thing about today, by the way. If you ask a woman today, she said to you, oh, today I'm tired. I did laundry. Don't they say that? What laundry? You don't do laundry. You put the clothes in the machine. You push the bomb. And then the clothes come out. Not only they are ready, they are dry. So what the laundry you did? You want to see what laundry was? Go and see. Check my grandmother. <laughs> I'm tired. I was doing shopping. You said she's tired, or she or he is tired. He was doing shopping. Go and see how how it take them to make bread. 
they spend, they, they wake up 5 a.m. in the morning, 4 a.m. in the morning, start doing, making the flower, the dough, and then she work hard, and then she work for two hours, and then she go and do a, uh, the prepare a breakfast and then she come back and then she 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 have to light the fire by her hands I, I mean you guys you have no idea you are lucky you go go and see back back in time and see people how you used to live All right but now they complain from doing laundry it is uh you know we push the bomb and then the clothes come ready and then what we are tired from because we put them in the drawer this is the tiring thing we put them in the drawer I mean, this is very tiring, right? <coughs> uh, yeah, so everything changed. Like uh, now, the entertaining world. Like now, you can open. There's there's cameras. Like actually, most of the time, I open. Uh, like there's live cameras. You can see around the world. Um, I mean, you can see beaches around the world. It's I mean, it's really beautiful. Technology is very helpful, but it can be very dangerous too. But depend on what you use. Anything can be useful. Too much salt will kill you. Too much sugar will kill you. Too much water will you you will be drowned. Anything can be useful or the opposite, right? I like your Abdulan language, my, my friend. Uh, uh, Isa, he's saying he was Abdul and now he is not no more. So he is an ex-Muslim. He's saying to me in Arabic. He's saying, قَدْ كُنْتُ عَبْدُولًا وَقَدْ تَحَرَّرْتُ مِنَ الْإِسْلَامِ I was Abdul. تَحَسَّنْتُ وَشَفِيتُ مِنْ مَرَضِ الْإِسْلَامِ I was Abdul. This is what he's saying in Arabic, Isa. Well, good for you, my friend. Me, myself, I never was Abdul. Did I tell you the story about the Abdul guy in Philippines? I think I did. Uh, but I don't know how many of you heard it before. I, I was in the elevator speaking in Arabic in the phone in the Philippines. When you go in the elevator, you lose connection, right? So I lost connection. And the guy, he took it as an opportunity to say to me, uh, you know, to greet me. So he said, Assalamu Alaikum. He's an Abdul. He's a Muslim. So I answered him, I said, Wa alaykum as -salam, Abdul. The guy, he looked at me, he says, MashaAllah, how you know my name? <laughs> MashaAllah, how you know my name? I said, what? Oh, no. <laughs> All of you, Abdul, for me. <laughs> it was a very funny moment. I mean, imagine if you are with me, and this guy, he said to me, he, he thought I'm a Muslim because I speak Arabic. You know, he heard me speaking Arabic. He don't speak Arabic himself. He's a Filipino. But he heard me speaking Arabic, and uh, you know, he knew how the Arabic sound like. So he said, Assalamu alaikum. I said, Wa alaikum assalam, Abdul. He said, Oh, mashallah, how you know I am Abdul? Like he's looking at me, and you should he, you should see his eyes. His eyes, like we came like, like, like wide, like a garage open, you know. He was like, Wow, how you know my name? You know. <laughs> That was a good one. Anyway, I, I actually this guy I took him to the yard uh, back here, like a, you know, like a garden parking, uh, park park. Sorry, like we were going up, and then he said to me, um, uh, "So you are a Muslim?" I said, "No, no, I am not. Sure not. That's not good." So you know, we start talking. He said, "Why not? It's good to be a Muslim." So do you want to show you? I said, "Sure." So we instead of going up, we stopped the elevator and we went down. We went to the park. We sat. I sat with him for some time, and he keeps saying, "There's no way in the Quran it says that. There's no way it says he have a Quran with him. He's very. He sound like a very religious. Uh, anyway, he said he will ask his uh, scholar, and he will come back to me about what he heard from me. After a while, I saw him in the mall, and he have a wife. She's wearing a burqa with him totally burqa she saw nothing her hands covered he looked at me he's saying like you know he's you know he's making a move with his mouth his eyes which means don't talk to me he was afraid in front of his wife to talk to me you know so i did not talk to him like don't talk to me right 
All right. Wa alaykum as salam, Abdul. I'm trying to read the, the chat, it's very hard to follow. Um, I hope your book will be translated to Basha, Indonesia. Or as I know, some people are translating, but people they say, I don't know if it's true or not. We will see. I mean, how much they are doing, I don't know. You wish you could talk to me? Everybody is welcome to talk to me. But, you know, uh, I talk in private only if there is something important. Otherwise, I will spend the day talking to people, you know. So if there is something important, you can uh, um, you can text me only if something important. All right. Uh, Malika, you want to be my friend? All of you are my friends. Why? Are you my enemy? Guys, what, what is this about? All of you are my friends. Why not? Actually, I have many of you. I consider them the same as a family for me because I spend time with, with you more than I spend time with anyone. How many hours I'm here? So, I wish really I can meet all of you. It would be fun. I don't know how many of you hate me, but <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> I hate me too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes it's good, like you know. But by the way, you you might meet me one day because my voice is is hard is in, uh, extremely uh, it's hard to hide. The second I talk, if you listen to me before, you will know that's it's me. I told you once I was in the Philippines too. I was in a coffee shop. There was a guy reading the Bible and he's taking notes. So I said, okay, this is a Christian guy, let's talk to him. Um, so I ask him what he is studying, etc., and, and then he says to me. I know you and I was looking at him how this guy he know me in the beginning I thought maybe he saw me in a seminar or something he said no no I know you I said I don't think we met before he said no 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 I know you I know you and then after thinking he said to me are you Christian Prince star <laughs> are you <laughs> yeah so if you met me ever you will know me from my voice I cannot hide my voice Maybe you will meet a million people. You will not find somebody have the same. It's different. It can be recognized easy. You protect me. Oh, that's good. Actually, before I was seeking protection. Now I'm safe. Yeah, thank you, all of you. Thank you. Yeah, sometimes, actually, I don't uh, like uh, go in uh, uh, argument because I don't want to... Um, you will be known in a second. Once I was doing a seminar, they did not announce that this is Christian Prince. They announced that a Christian from the Middle East, etc. They don't say Christian Prince. And then after I finished, two girls they came, and one of them she get like the other one she's trying to push her to talk to me. So I said, okay, uh, you know, people are shaking hands with me after a seminar. So I said, how I can help you? You want something? She said, yeah, I have a question. Uh, are you Christian Prince? And then I said, yeah. The other one she said see I told you this is him <laughs> this is him <laughs> but once a guy he thought I am he said to me uh, are you Sam Shamoon I said did you see Sam Shamoon he said, um, I said we said what I said, did you see how Sam Shamoon look like I said um, I don't remember I said do I look like Sam Shamoon <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I look so far from Sam Shamoon. The guy asked me, Are you Sam Shamoon? <laughs> so Sam Shamoon, like if he have a video, like if he's a, a person he don't go on video, I would understand him, I think, maybe, you know. But anyway. Yeah, you do security. Yeah, that you say the true security is security of the mind. You see, when a, when a person, he is not secure in his mind, he have no security. Because the first thing you live in your life, inside the box of your head. There is all your fear, your trust, your life, 
your pleasure your wisdom your sadness so try always to look for security in different way so do we have any Muslim want to say anything Uh, I made I made a saying once I fell asleep listening to uh, to a Christian Prince debate I ended having a dream a client of mine was yelling at me but CP voice was attached to his body actually one of you he sent me a picture yeah, hold on let me see if I can find it Sometimes things are funny. I don't know if I deleted. Uh, uh, somebody he 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 um, he have his car license plate. It says zero zero seven CP. Where is the picture? I think I deleted. Maybe. Yeah, I think I deleted. No, no, I have it. Here we go. CP <laughs> oh boy I'm not going to show all the number I don't know who this guy is you know but this is part of the number because there's letters I don't want to show all the letters <laughs> yeah, that's funny isn't it Zero zero seven. This is James Bond CP. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't know even what country is that. I like the car BMW. <laughs> I would like to exchange, exchange it for my donkey. Yeah, zero zero seven CP. I don't know where it is. I'm not sure really. Anyway, guys, I think we have enough for today. And uh, feel free to download the video. You can cut it pieces, the one that the part we are talking about marriage, etc. For those who like to help us. And especially the part where it says that Muslim men they can rent you, you know, if, as a female. But always my advice for all men and women especially women you know women are very emotional and they are driven most of the time by emotion and sometimes men they take advantage of your emotion so you have to be careful you have to be in control of yourself and don't be um, you see even in america they say easy come easy go is that correct they say that easy come easy go so don't be easy don't be easy and easy here is about being and I mean uh, anyone can grab you all right be something priceless so when a man he have you he respect what he have when a man he got you he knew he did not get something cheap he did not get something everybody throw around before him don't be cheap be priceless This is my advice to you, and it's up to you to listen or not. If you are my sister, I will talk to you the same way I'm saying right now. If any man can have you, why he wouldn't marry you? Why any man will marry any woman? Because men always they like to get the benefit of the women, to enjoy her. But they don't want to have responsibility. So don't be cheap. Don't be, don't be some no one. You know, don't be like you see, you watch those movies. I mean, those stupid movies, they corrupt our mind, make us believe it's fun to have sex around. It's fun to have a boyfriend and replace a boyfriend, a new boyfriend. And then after sleeping with 100 men, what is what is next? You will be cheap. You will be like a, a used and abused car. People load, get out, load, get out, load, get out. 
you don't want to be a taxi you are you are you are a child of God you are priceless give what you have for someone he deserves it someone he will love you he don't want to have sex with you only he sleep with you because he loves you and he want to live with you forever so if you want really a man to respect you you need to force him to respect you you earn the respect it's not going to happen immediately same for the man the man who sleep around don't marry him the man who sleep with you because you have a nice body he will leave you tomorrow because someone else have nicer body do you understand me I'm just being honest with you if this is the reason he is with you for the same reason he will leave you like women they want to make a surgery to have big breasts okay so this guy he want to be with you because you have big breasts why are you a cow and tomorrow he will see some women she have a better breast if this is the reason he made you made him like you <laughs> this would be the same reason to dump you don't be stupid don't be stupid this is why I say always try to see someone who loves you for things will grow not things will shrink your beauty will shrink like somebody is proud I have a nice body I just saw somebody in the text saying that I have a nice body well your body will not be nice just wait the older you get the the faster you notice how many how much maintenance you need you will carry a bag of medicine with you even if you want to go to the bathroom there's only one thing can grow that is you know your spiritual life and your wisdom so marry a person who is wise who love you for his wisdom will lead will lead him and will lead you to live together in a better life a person who he think hey, going to the gym okay I'm going to the gym I'm going to have a big missile so the girls will look at me this is a shallow person he will not stay with you trust me the first girl he saw see her wearing shorter skirt than yours and she have nicer legs than yours he will leave you and go for her right but anyway sometimes it's very hard to to convince people about what's right what's wrong and that's why they end the wrong end you know you will end the wrong end if you don't uh, treat yourself carefully uh, to women don't ask Mahar to, I don't know what you mean when a woman is a strong then only the strong will approach you I don't know what does that mean when you it's not about strong this is not about strong it's about reserving yourself from being tempted temptation is very powerful sometimes you feel lonely sometimes you you have you have needs your physical body have needs we cannot deny that so you have to fight your needs in order to get what is right it's like you know somebody you want to eat and I want to eat now okay but if you wait maybe 30 minutes more we can have a better food so what people want they want just life became a fast food and today sadly if you are I don't want to use the word but I have to use it if you are a whore they say you are nice you are cool cool you are cool you are open-minded you are fun but in their eyes trust me you are a whore they don't respect you they speak about sleeping with you as if you are you know they're proud about sleeping with you so why you want to do that you know what I mean maybe my words is harsh for you but this is the truth right Uh, look look at the comments guys some like look people they don't uh, listen I have a nice body <laughs> okay so what if you have a nice body and what is next do you think 
the Korean should be forbidden the Quran should be forbidden well I don't know what it should be forbidden uh, but I uh, you know you cannot forbid a book because uh, it's impossible to forbid a book first of all like the same the Muslims they forbid my books but my books is there they forbid my videos but my people hear me so it's not forbidding the book will solve the problem it is speaking to the mind of people so they will not believe in it this is more powerful otherwise if you forbid something sometimes forbidding something make it more attractive you know what I mean to fight drugs is not just by saying I'm going to go out of after drug dealers but if you make people don't buy it if you con if you convince them not to buy it then drugs nobody will import drugs is that correct why there's drug dealers if nobody buy there's no drug dealers is that correct okay well so the best solution is make people more aware of the danger of drugs and they will not buy it then nobody can sell it then even if you bring drugs and put it in the street nobody will take it as simple as that so people always fight things in the wrong way like I fight it so I force my law like in Saudi Arabia you know you cannot you can have you cannot have sex without contract or supposedly which is a prostitution anyway but people they do and the more you force it the more they do it it is the most corrupt country ever everything happening there I remember the story of the limousine company you call the limousine car if you are a female they send you a, a male from Al Bosnia to sleep with you in the back seat if you are a male they send you a female from Al Bosnia or from those from uh, poor countries in the east of Europe Muslim countries and uh, you know it's a limousine in the car you know? uh, nobody drink alcohol more than them every year uh, hundreds of people die there because they drink perfume imagine perfume so here we go alcohol is forbidden but is it really forbidden it's not it became more attractive so forbidding things will not solve a problem right it's not really what make life better uh, anyway guys I want to say thank you for being here this video will not stay long so I will keep it there for a few hours and I will take it down so for those who want to download it feel free to download and again for for ladies I apologize if I use sometimes words might sound harsh for you but trust me it's for your benefit so nobody can take advantage of you be strong don't be cheap let the man respect you force him to respect you don't be available to anyone you know there's a hadith uh, uh, about a guy who have his his wife anyone can touch her you know look what kind of life this life is anyone can touch her so even the man who marry you he will not feel special yeah he have many men before him and maybe you will have many men after him so why you what no comment thank you guys for being here uh, uh, I and I hope what I share with you was good and if it was not good don't listen to me maybe I'm not right uh, thank you Lord for having all those people here and thank you Lord for those who help us and support us and uh, I really appreciate all of you and I receive a lot of messages full of love and and I don't know what to say I'm really I feel I feel bad because I cannot respond to you but I apologize really it's too many and I cannot really answer everybody I prefer to come here you know because English is not my first language too so sending back emails like some of you send me wrong email for me if I send you an email I would say thank you for your kind words or you know it's very it's not easy for me to type back so you want to talk to me talk to me here in the chat I will answer you I would be happy to to give you the time you deserve uh, so with this I want to say thank you guys may the Lord bless you and I will see you soon again Christ is Lord and Islam is false. God bless. Take care.